The greatest things, I think, in the world, the greatest things that can touch us uh, where we live are imagined. We find something that uh, excites our imagination, and these are the high points of our life. Uh, I have imagined things, and so have you. And uh, the matrix of the imagination is language. Um, we take language for granted, but it informs almost everything we do. We, I, I once read, uh, I think it was a writer named Peter Farr, who said that thought is talking to oneself. And if you think about that and, and believe it, as I do, it means that we cannot think really without language. We think in language. Language is the thing that brings all of these principles together and makes them real for us. And um, so, um, cannot overestimate the, the, the power of, of language. You know, and there are language barriers. There are so many languages in the world and they, they sometimes come up against each other. And the points of contact are very difficult sometimes. Uh, tell you a story about that. Um, once upon a time, I was, uh, I was on Greenland. And um, I happened to take a boat, a small boat, like a tugboat, up the northwest coast of Greenland. Am I right about northwest? <laughs> anyway, along the coast of Greenland to a village which is the, the, the farthest north village in the, on the planet. It's called Sienapuk, <coughs> a small village. And uh, on our way, we passed icebergs. And they were huge, as huge as skyscrapers. <coughs> And they had been wind-shaped, so they had windows in them sometimes, and, and they had brilliant colors, the colors of the rainbow. They were very beautiful. And uh, was it again one of those uh, times of wonder, you know, I don't expect to see those things again, but having seen them once, it's enough to fill my heart. And uh, we, we arrived at the little village of Sierapaluk, which is on a fjord, and some of these giant icebergs had calved, you know, pieces had broken off and they plunged into the water and they were washed up into the fjords. And on the beach at Sierra Apaluk were a number of ice forms. They were oh, uh, on an average of, say, uh, five or six feet tall. And they were there in the sun and they were melting. And they were creaking, uh, you know, because they were melting. And I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, I, I had a, uh, 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 I was paid to visit the place by National Geographic. They had outfitted me with a camera and uh, wondered what I might come back with, you know. And so I thought to myself, these ice forms, oh, they're wonderful, they're wonderful. And look, look at the creaking and cracking and groaning and they're going to, they're going to explode. And I want a picture of one as it explodes. <laughs> And so I took my camera and I pointed it at one of the likely candidates, it's creaking and groaning, and I waited. And I waited. And I waited until my arms got tired of holding the camera. Well, my wife was with me, and uh, so I gave her the camera and I said, Look, you take the picture. I will try to facilitate this uh, explosion by throwing rocks at this thing. So I backed away a few feet, I picked up some stones from the beach and I started, like an idiot, stoning the iceberg. And I, as I was engaged in this, this uh, madness, I heard someone shouting behind me. And I turned around and halfway up the peneplain was a, uh, an Inuit, uh, Hunter, coming down from his shack with a little rifle in his hands, yelling at the top of his lungs, coming straight for me, and I thought, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I've lived a good life. I've seen much of the world, but it is over. And he came up to me, stood about this you know, here on me with his ancient rifle in his hands, and he was just yelling at the top of his lungs. And they wondered why he didn't shoot me. And then slowly, in a wonderful miracle of the oral tradition, I understood that he was asking me if I wanted him to shoot the iceberg. <laughs> I cannot tell you how relieved I was. Oh, I was 
was so relieved, and I, and I, I you know, I, in, the, in, the, in the best way I could, by gesturing, I said, yes, go ahead, shoot me there. <laughs> <laughs> so he backed off a few feet, he pointed this ancient rifle, I thought it might explode in his face, and pulled the trigger, hit the iceberg, it had no more effect upon it than my stones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but the, the hunter, the Inuit hunter, had fulfilled his duty. He had seen these two giants come to his village. Right away they want to kill the iceberg. <laughs> so it is incumbent upon him to assist us in our madness. He shoots the iceberg. Then he graciously bows to me and backs off and returns to his shack. And I, I, you know, I've thought about that many, many times. It was a wonderful encounter. And uh, I think that uh, my wife and I have passed into legend. <laughs> <laughs>